Welcome to this week's Monument Monday and we're in Marrow Peninsula here today um, in the townland of Clockcar and this is Leo Layden from the Sligo Field Club and this is Leo's land and he's got this wonderful portal dolmen on his land and we're going to talk to Leo about that today. Um, tell us Leo, what is a portal dolmen? A portal dolmen is a megalithic tomb and it's one of four types that we have in Ireland. It's by no means the most numerous. There's only about 200 of them in Ireland, actually. And they're in a, specifically in the north part of Ireland, the northern part of the, of the country, in a line from Galway to Dublin, but, but with a prominent cluster down around the southeast, around Waterford and that. It comprises really why it's called a portal tomb. You have two portals, which yeah. you can see here behind me. Those two, the, two large upright Two stones, large uprights at the yeah. front, which are like two portals. Right. You have this back stone, which is collapsed. And you can see here, it's, it's at a point where it would have held a capstone. Some of them also would have had a couple of ancillary uprights, one side of the, underneath the capstone. And quite a few of them have what we call a jam stone at the front, where after being used, this stone, like a, a door stone, was put in front of the two portals and it was left not to be entered again. Some of them also have a smaller jam stone on the bottom, maybe half a metre high or a foot high. And we believe that that was significant in its own right, that if you entered the tomb, that you had to step over this and it, it was making you aware that you were stepping into another realm. In your introduction, Tamlin, you says that we're in the townland of Cloud Curr, which we are. But we're also on the peninsula of Maharau. And Maharau means the fertile plain of Eva. Yeah, it's certainly, it's certainly is wonderful land up here, Leo. And you have a panoramic view. You have a 360 degree yeah. view of all the peninsula. It's the only hill on the peninsula where you have this 360 degree view. Awa was one of the first women reputedly to have come to Ireland. She was one of the 50 women that Cesare brought her, and Cesare was the granddaughter of Noah. And there's reputed to have landed here on the coast. And she was a healing woman, or she's referred to as a leech woman, and leeches were used for healing wounds and things like that. And I'll go a bit more into an aspect of that, because quartz was a very important aspect of healing. And here, the most important stone, other than the capstone in the monument, is this giant quartz stone here. We're looking through the valley here down towards Glencar and Leo you've made an observation about this monument that the shape of the monument reflects the shape of the mountain in the distance. Can you tell me what's the symbolism behind this and why was the monument made in such a way? The monument itself may have started out of, as one standing stone and it was added to later and it became a portal tomb. And it's more than likely it did stand, start off as one standing big quartz slab. And that quartz slab is interesting because it has been deliberately broken to resemble the shape of the side of Ben Bulban. Yeah. As you can see there in the Glencar Valley. And if not, while the monument itself is faced towards the north and, and it's the longest day of the year in June, the sun more or less rises in between the two portals. Twice a year at the equinox, you have a phenomenon that happens here and that the sun rises exactly in the center of that valley. And a lot, there, that's a lot of symbolism about fertility because the sun low is a male god or god or a male figure. And now uh, that this peninsula is named after is a female entity, a healing woman or, or a goddess of plenty, a, fertility, a goddess of fertility. Uh, you have that symbolism going on and that the sun, of course, we don't have any growth without the sun. The sun rises in the valley and it's fertilizing the earth by its rays and its heat. And right on the equinox twice a year, you'll get this phenomenon. Round the 20th, give or take a few days of March and give or take a few days in September again. And the equinox this year is on next Monday, the 22nd. So tell me, Leo, when would a monument of this kind have been in use? These particular megaliths, the portal tombs, one of the four types we have in Ireland, are the oldest. 
we have date, we have a confirmed date of 3900 BC for pulling the brown down in County Clear. And that predates the passage tombs, it predates the Ugrange by about a thousand years. And they were among the earliest built. Unlike some of the other tombs, core tombs specifically, and passage tombs, where you had individual burials placed at very, very specific areas within the tomb, this doesn't happen in Portland tombs. You have more of a communal burial, burial burn bone, cremated bone, of more than one individual. In, in Paul Lebron, there were 33 individuals placed interned in the tomb and they were all placed to get in together, jumbled up bones. Yeah. So it wasn't specific, not not one specific person buried in it. E even though legend has that we're going back to mythology again, but as we know from this summer, the, our Irish archaeology and mythology is a bit interlinked. Legend has it, and when the survey was, was being done in the 19th century, the land being mapped and that um, our, it was told to the people who were writing down the stories then that this Princess Awa is reputedly buried under a stone on a hill in Maharau and more than likely this is the stone that she's buried under on this hill in Maharau. Fantastic, so we're linking that history, the folklore and the and mythology, mythology and, and the and archaeology. And nice maybe if it was a dig done and it transpired and it was the bone yeah. of a female yeah. it'd be like Neil Ridge tying it all in again together. And we've, um, while we were here looking at this monument, we've made a little discovery. So we're going to show you that. And uh, Leo, you can tell us what we've got on this stone. Well, it was your sad spot, the town, the way the sun was shining earlier. More than likely, we've discovered rock art in the portal tomb and that here we have these cut marks. We counted about 12 or 13 of them individually. Here's some very nice ones. And maybe we have a bit of pecking around them the side of one of them and this is quite rare in that I don't know of any portal tomb of the 200 or so in Ireland that has any rock art at all on them. I'd like to take the opportunity now to thank you Leo for this wonderful tour of this amazing um, megalithic tomb in your land and I really appreciate you showing me around. You're very welcome Tamlin and really I'm just a custodian. This monument has stood here for about 5,000 years, almost maybe 6,000 years, and hopefully the generations that come after us will take as much care as the generations which have come before us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>